Welcome to a series in Unity 2023. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about static classes and ways to maintain data across scenes. So across a number of different videos now, we've been looking at many different concepts within Unity. Remember, Unity is an engine. It drives the experience. It also has lots of different systems. We create game objects, which have components, which then talk to those systems. What we've now learned is that we can divide up a game into different scenes. One of the ways to think about scenes might be levels, but we've also seen how we can have a main menu be a particular scene and then move between one scene and the next. So if I load up down here in the project view, our menu scene right here, notice it has a canvas, which of course means it has user interface game objects. And if we play from here, click buttons, and if we click start, it sends us to another scene. So if I click over here in the hierarchy view, we have a listing of all of its corresponding game objects. One of the things we now want to think about is how do we maintain data across scenes? Because there's a little bit of a problem we've got ourselves into, and I'm gonna play this again so I can point it out. So if I start at one particular scene, and notice it has its own list of game objects, which have their own code associated with them, but then I move scenes, or if I load scenes, I now have a different scene with different game objects and different scripting components, which means the previous scene doesn't exist anymore because those game objects have been removed and their components, which are part of the game objects, have also been removed. So any data that we had that was part of those game objects doesn't exist anymore, or at least is not easily accessible. This creates a little bit of a problem because what we want to create is the ability to have score right here in the kind of upper left of our game view and carry that between scenes. To do that, we need a different solution than what Unity provides. We need to be thinking about what C Sharp provides to us and create a solution that way. So as we've been talking about C Sharp classes, we've been talking at different levels of access. We have fields and we have methods as part of C Sharp classes. And to show you an example of that, let's return back to assets and just pull up the main menu here. So we reopen Visual Studio, give it just a moment here to load. And we see we have class, and in this case, two different methods. Now, if I were to open a different one, say square, it has fields and also has methods. Now notice we're here we use serialized field. So as we previously discussed, at our fields right here have three different options for levels of access. They can be private, which is the default, public, which means other code and Unity can access it, and serialized field, which means the class can access it and Unity can access it. So we need to use that knowledge because what we want is a class that sticks around but has fields such that other code can access it. And we need that because we need to create something that can hold information, score, and potentially health for us, and also carry that between scenes. So we need a class, but we've previously seen how classes right here in C Sharp are part of scripting components which are part of Unity. So we need to create a new c -sharp file that's not part of any one game object. That is not a scripting component. It's a c -sharp file, but not a scripting component. And then we need to talk through what we use to create something that can stick around between scenes. So let's return back to Unity. So we notice we have square and we have main menu with our c -sharp files. We know that because it's got a little sharp symbol on them. So what if instead of creating a scripting component, which we've been doing through selecting a game object in the hierarchy view, go over to the inspector view and add a new component, instead of doing that, let's come down here in the project view and create a new c -sharp file. So as we've seen, there's always multiple ways to go about creating things within Unity. And as we saw with game objects, there's the plus, and then there's the game object dropdown as well as right clicking. So we can do something very similar in the project view. So for this, I want to click on this right here, and there it is, C Sharp Script, and click right here. Now, I'm going to call this something a little bit interesting. I'm going to call this Game State. 
and press return or enter. Now the reason I'm using the term gain state is I'm building off of a programming term called state. So when we discuss when we discuss state as it applies to programming, we're discussing a set of values. So what we might now know within C sharp are fields or methods or whatever that are changed during the course of interactions. You can kind of think about it in the classic sense of a convenience machine or a vending machine. That is, it has an initial state, it has no money in it, you put money in it, so it has a change of values, then you press some buttons, the money then goes down, and you get something back out. So it has input and output, and has changes depending on what buttons are pressed. So the state, the set of values, changes over time. So I'm borrowing the term from programming, a state for this game. So we're going to set something up, and then it's possibly going to change, although it doesn't have to, over multiple scenes. So to do that, we're going to have to edit this file now. So we now have game state. Now we need to change some things about how it's initially set up. So right now it's using this thing called mono behavior, which I've highlighted right here on the screen. Mono behavior is given to us by Unity Engine. Remember we talked a little bit about libraries, what we're using the software libraries on which this code depends. That's fine, we want to keep Unity Engine, but we don't want this right here. And we don't want any of these right here, because as soon as we got rid of mono behavior, we also lost access to the corresponding system. Remember by default when we talked about creating a C -sharp file as a scripting component, it has start and update methods. And these allow it to tap into other existing systems, part of the startup and then part of update, which of course is before it's rendered or drawn to the screen. So I'm getting rid of all of this. Now we've got a public class game state. Well, so far so good. We need to add right here something a little bit different behind public. We're going to call this a static class. And it's public, meaning other things can access it. Now the word static in C sharp means it sticks around. And it also means there's only ever one of it. So we're creating something that's going to hold some values that's going to stick around until the game ends. So no matter how many scenes we move through, it will continue to exist. And it will only be one of them. It will be static. So let's think back through our levels of access. We've previously seen that by default, when we create a field within a class, it's set to private, which means that the class itself can only access it and other things can't, including Unity. Unity can't access the private field either. We can also use public. A public field means that anything else can access it, including Unity and potentially other classes. So that's okay for right now. I want public. And then what I want is something to keep track of score. Well, I want an integer, which is to say a whole number. Remember in C sharp, we call decimal numbers floating numbers. So I want an int, and I'm going to call this score right here. And it is going to recommend that I make this as well. if I can spell it correctly, a static variable. Now, what we've created is a static class that contains a static variable. Now, the reason why that was an error is because it won't allow us to create things that change within something that doesn't change. Put another way, the static class will exist. Unity via C Sharp is going to create it for us, and it will stick around. It can't have anything that's non-static within it without kind of running into really weird issues. So we started to create a field, a public integer score, and it reminded us, hey, this also needs to be static. Okay, cool. So now we have public static int score and set it to initial value of zero. So when this is created, it will have a value of zero. So let's file and save. So now we have a static field as part of a static class. 
And notice up here, these were grayed out. We're actually not using any other software libraries, which now we can safely remove. So I'll go ahead and file, save this again. So we have a static field and a static class. So let's do something a little bit strange now. So we'll turn back to Unity. Give it just a second to reload everything. Okay. So it's reloaded and it now understands that this is a static class containing a static field. But we've got a little bit of a problem because if we move over to, let's go into scenes and sample scene, we know that part of square right here has score, its own score right here, that is tied to a different game object. It's tied to this over here, such that as things happen in Square, it then updates this text over here, which is fine. But now we got a little bit of a problem because now we have two different scores. So there's a couple of ways we can adjust this. The first is we can simply remove Score from the Square file. So if we go over to Assets, come over to Square, which we previously had opened, and we just get rid of this, or just get rid of this number right here. And any time it references score, which we see down here, we don't need it at all. So let's look at that as a first step. So I'm going to take out score right here, and it's going to get some red squigglies, and it's going to tell me this is wrong. And it is. But what we want to do is we want to go to something that doesn't change, the static class and access a field that doesn't change, the static field. Now the value can change, but it, pre it existing won't change. There is one thing called a game state. Notice it's now anticipating that's what I'm gonna write. And it has a thing called score. So let's write it again. Game, state, score plus one. And right here as well, game. And it says, hey, is this what you want? And it is, and I'm going to press enter right there. So now, instead of a number score, an integer, a whole number, keeping track of right here within square, it's going to reference game state score, which of course is defined over here. Now, this is where the access comes into play. This is a public class. Public words right there which means any other class can also access it. This is also a public field, which means any other class can access it. They are both static, which means they're going to stick around between scenes. So even if this scene that contains square, this code disappears at some point, this will stick around between things, which means we can always reference it when we need to change things. In fact, notice something a little bit interesting. This is three references. And notice right here, in square.cs, we are using this on line 36, line 36, and line 38. We are using this on line 36, line 36, and line 38, which is correct. Those are the references to the now static class containing a static field. Go ahead and save this. So let's return back to Unity. So now, if we reload from over here, right here, and we click Start, and I move this around, we have score changed to 1 right here, which is what we saw previously. So from the player's perspective, nothing really changed. We still are adjusting score. However, the major change for us as developers is that now we have something that exists outside of the scene itself because it's not tied to a scripting component that's tied to a game object that's within a scene. It is part of a static class, so it exists outside of any particular scene. So let's do one thing more. What we want now is we want some health because we want to track health across scenes as well. So let's go back to our game state, which is going to contain everything, and let's do the same thing over again. Mm -hmm. 
Now we have a public static int, so it's public, anything can access it. It's static, which means it's just going to be created and exist. It is an integer, which means it is a whole number and not a decimal, which C sharp calls a float. And it's called health, and it's set to initial value of three. File, save. So now we've created score and we've created health. So now, potentially, as we move between scenes, and one of the ways we can think about scenes is moving between levels, we have score and we have health, and they will exist across things, which means potentially we can change their values. It also means that as a player progresses across scenes, maybe moving in difficulty or moving across a space, they also have a score and a health follows it with them. So this is why we might want to use a static class with static fields within C Sharp. They exist because we create them one time. They are static, what C Sharp calls static. And within Unity, this means we can access them from other C Sharp files because Unity reloads everything anytime we change it. So it's reloaded, and this means once it's run, this will exist as game state. Remember, talking about state as a kind of change of values over time. And now it exists. So whenever we move scenes, we have health and we have score, and they now exist across scenes. Now, the reason why we're setting this up in this particular video is I want to move in future videos to multiple scenes. And we're going to quickly run into a problem whenever we want to access score or health, and they don't already exist. So for the purpose of this video, we were establishing a game state state barred from programming, meaning a change in values due to interactions, where it's part of the game, and we set it up as a static class within C Sharp. The word static within C Sharp means that it's created one time. We're not creating or recreating, it just exists until the application or game is done. We've also created static fields, score and health, which we see over here as just a preview. And these allow us to, in one particular scene, access them, and also in other particular scenes, access them as well. So this allows us to start to think about having some set of values that exist outside of any one scene as we start to build multiple scenes in our ongoing game example in Unity 2023. Thanks for watching.